Hey guys, what's going on tonight? Um, just got back from some gallery events. I was on my feet quite a bit today, like seven or eight hours, so I'm pretty tired. Um, so I, yeah, I just want to talk tonight, um, tonight about basically a lot of people touch on this is the narcissist from your hometown. Um, and you all know I moved back to my hometown in Nebraska um, about eight to nine months ago. Um, and there has been a lot of culture shock for me. Because uh, as you know, I was living on the East Coast for the, good, the better part of the like seven years and coming back here. So, um, yeah, it's been a lot to absorb, but I say I've become pretty acculturated again to the, the Midwest. Um, but it's still, there's still every day, there's always something coming up that just throws me into like a culture shock. So, um, I'm still trying to get used to it again. Um, but the biggest thing, uh, I want to talk about is your hometown narcissists and hometown haters. So, when I've, since I've come back, I have been treated like a pariah. Um, I have only found maybe one or two friends here that I had grown up with that I can honestly say, like, will legit um, still, you know, want to hang out with me and that I still want to hang out with them. Um, and that actually like each other, but everybody else is like, no, like... They have been cut off or whatever. They just came back around. They heard I was moving back here or they heard I was here. Or they just pulled some fuck shit while I was living in New York or, or whatever. Um, and then they got cut off. And then they wonder why. Like, oh gee, you know, and even though they know exactly what they did to you. They know exactly what they did to you. And they know what they did to me. To be cut off and, you know, why you don't want anything to do with them. They know damn well. And that's why a lot of them will come back into your life after so much time has passed and they fucked you over in the past. These toxic ass motherfuckers. They want to come back with some fake ass apology just to try to come and fuck you up the uh, the worst, uh, a, a worse way the next time. You know what I mean? So that's the only reason they're coming back. But they have to throw in that fake ass apology just to get your attention again to get you to talk to them. And that's how I got pulled in the last time by some hometown, you know, fake ass frauds, fake ass narcissists. So, you know, whatever it is they're coming back into your life for, it's not for anything good. It's to drag you into the middle of some drama, some fuck shit they're going through, some life crisis, some, you know, baby mama drama some, you know, divorce marriage drama, which we all know narcissists never divorce their spouses. They always stay, you know, uh, tied to them. They have to be tied to everyone. They're like parasites. So they can't just, you know, make a clean cut like someone like me can. When I want to cut a motherfucker off, married or not, I'm going to cut that motherfucker off. And I'm going to have a clean slate, you know, for the new person and make room for them in my life. I'm not going... To just hang on and hang on and bullshit everyone and pull people into the middle of my drama, my bullshit, and lie and say that I'm splitting with my spouse when I'm not. That's what narcissists do. They lie, they bullshit people, and they say, oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to be splitting from them, but it's all a fucking lie. All they want to do is drag you into the middle of their drama, um, feel like they've got multiple people vying for them and fighting for them and competing for them. Um, so they can, you know, have their egos fed. Um, but whole time, it's like they're not going to actually, you know, get that divorce. They might talk about it, talk a good fucking game and all this bullshit. But they rarely ever split up with their spouse until the day that their spouse has had enough of being abused by them. They finally wake the fuck up and they cut things off and finally have the strength to break free. But the problem with narcissistic relationships is that, you know, um, it's impossible almost. It, it gets a lot harder the more you stay, the longer you stay with them to leave because you just become more and more fucked up and you become more and more accepting of abuse and disrespect. 
and your whole life just turns upside down. So, um, yeah, the hometown narcissists are the worst and they want to drag you into all of that bullshit because they see someone like myself, you know, um, I actually had the balls to leave my hometown, uh, to start a life for myself in extremely expensive cities like Miami and New York City. Um, I, I made it in those cities. I did very well for myself in those cities. I wasn't living in a box. I wasn't living in squalor. I was doing well for myself, worked my way up in my career, got experience at Fortune 100 companies, major companies, got major work experience out on the coast, um, traveled the world, um, you know, uh, built a whole career, a whole foundation of future financial freedom for myself, and um, have no baggage, zero baggage, uh, never been married. Um, no, you know, little rat bastard kids uh, with any, you know, baby fathers. Uh, I have zero baggage, zero drama, and I take care of myself. I go to the gym like seven to eight hours a week. Um, I eat very healthy. I don't eat any fast food or takeout, you know, stuff like that anymore. Um, you know, I take care of my health, uh, my appearance, um, you know, I, uh, I look a lot younger than most people do my age. And yet look at me, like all of that, that I just explained the last two minutes and I'm still single. Like the reason for that is because we're, you know, I'm surrounded by motherfucking narcissists and toxic ass pieces of shit who they would rather worship, uh, the baby mamas out there and the baby fathers and all these trashy ass motherfuckers who have nothing going for them. And they would rather attack someone like me, the fucking successful and accomplished one, who I don't have any of that drama or baggage tied to me. They'd rather attack me and bring me down and say that I'm the I'm the problem, that you know, that I'm not worthy or whatever the fuck. I mean, they're just totally backwards, you know? Narcissists are just tr human trash cans. Like they're so backwards. But I know deep down, I know in the back of my mind that I can have anyone I want. It's just that I am very selective and um, very choosy. And I'm not just going to let any piece of trash walk into my life. It's not going to happen. So, you know, and it, didn't, it bothers a lot of these men in my hometown that I run into that, you know, that I haven't seen in years, y'all. Like, years. And they hate the fuck out of me. They are my haters. Just like female narcissists, um, the male narcissists from my hometown that knew me in school, they are my haters too. And they hate the fuck out of me because they see me as almost competition. You know how I've explained male narcissists are pretty much bisexual. They're, they're, they're closeted homosexuals. So they compete with women, you know? And uh, for attention and all that. So they're pretty much women in, in men's bodies, you know. And they're down low closeted gays. So, of course, they hate my ass. And they see me as competition when real men and normal men, they would not be competing with a woman. So anyway, that's another story. But, you know, they the ones in my hometown, like I said, they... Um, see me and they hate my ass. They're jealous that I was able to uh, break free from all the toxicity of, of my hometown of Omaha, uh, break free from all the drama, break free from, <clears throat> you know, ha uh, not having the courage to leave Omaha and do amazing things and make it in extremely expensive competitive cities um, and also backpack the world and, you know, um, live live every day like it's my last, live an amazing life, and then come back um, completely, you know, like I said, uh, secure and um, set for life, basically, based on all my accomplishments. And um, they just, uh, you know, they, they can't stand it. They can't stand that I'm not down in the fucking gutter, that I don't have all these baby father issues, that I don't need them, that I don't need them for any financial, emotional, no kind of support, that I'm completely content, at peace, and happy with my goddamn self. And this pisses them off the most. They hate that I'm independent like this. And they want to be to drag me down and try and control me and make sure that I can rely on them and only them. And that's not gonna that's never gonna fucking happen. That's why these narcissists that, that attacked me 
in school and, and tried to control me and have power over me. Now they see that I'm levels above them, that I've come back to my hometown. And they see that I'm levels above them. I'm on levels that they can never even dream of achieving or getting to. And that's why they hate my ass and they don't want anything to do with me because they see how beautiful I've become, not only on the outside, but the inside. They see how, you know, I have been a, a fucking genius about minimizing the stressors in my life by not making stupid fucking life altering decisions like having children with the wrong person or, you know, getting married to the wrong person and being, you know, getting multiple divorces. They see that. I have not made those same mistakes that a lot of people make and that I am, uh, you know, very focused, ambitious, you know, cutthroat, um, serious about my life and my future and my career. And they can't stand it. They can't fucking stand it because I'm out earning these motherfuckers. I'm out earning these men in my hometown and, and I would embarrass the fuck out of them. They, they bring nothing to the table. If I were to sit down with them and, and go on a date with someone from my fucking hometown, from my high school, it would be an embarrassment. It would be a joke. See, back when I was dating, um, like, let's say in Miami and New York City, I was going out with men, you know, driving BMWs, um, you know, uh, doctors, lawyers. And, I, you know, I'm not saying like they're, you know, better than other men or anything. A lot of them are narcissists, too. But what I'm saying is, you know, I was going out with a very high caliber of men in those cities and you just you you have some of them here in Omaha but not to the same extent as you do like on the coast so I was going on dates with these kind of men who really had all their shit together and um just had a lot to bring to the table you know paid for everything paid for all my dates you know everything you know it's was, it was no questions but here it like I said it's a joke you know I they I, I go I meet them and they have nothing to give me they have nothing to bring to the table um, I'm probably earning like, you know, a uh, hell of a lot more than they ever will. Um, you know, uh, it's just completely incompatible, you know what I mean? With my lifestyle and, you know, they, they probably don't ha ha even have any education or they didn't finish it. I mean, we just have nothing to relate to each other about, you know what I mean? So, and that's why they're going to hate my ass because they're going to see, oh, well, you've done this, this, and I can't really, you know... What are we really going to relate about? And plus, they're going to feel like, because they're narcissistic, they're going to feel like somehow, like the comp, you know, the competition with me, like your hometown haters, you know, like they're going to feel, oh, uh, now I got to compete with you and blah, blah, blah. And it's crazy, but um, they're going to hate my ass. And, and a lot of them are so insecure. They would probably definitely, if we ever did date, they would cheat on me right away because they would feel inferior and emasculated that a woman is out earning them. And it's not fair. It's not right. But that's how a lot of them think, especially the narcissistic men. They think that if you earn a hell of a lot more than they do, then um, they, they got to go out and cheat on with you with some toxic bitch. Uh, because, you know, they just got to they got to prove themselves or whatever. You know, so uh, they can't have the, a woman that they're with out earning them. And it's a bunch of fucking bullshit. But they're they're so pathetic. They're so pathetic. I'm so over them. But, um, you know, it's like I, I could I could bring to the table like. I have all this, like I said, to bring to the table as a super empath, as a warrior, as a survivor, as a chosen one. And and these these people from my hometown, these haters like. They don't have jack shit to bring and they know it. So, um, you know, like I said, I have ran into some. I went to some events today and I saw some people. Uh, people here, you know, even recently they have asked around about me. Of course, they know my sisters. I have two sisters. They still live here in Omaha. They've lived here their whole fucking lives, of course. Um, except one did live in New Orleans for like two years. I think she was like almost secretly copying me because I lived in Miami. So she was probably like, oh, I'll go live in a hot, you know, party city too. I don't know, whatever. But she lived there for a while um, and then came back. But Omaha, like, like I said, it's, it's pretty like people talk here, you know, people, whatever, like, you know, from your school and... Somebody was asking me about her and obviously like I don't speak to them, but they asked me about one of my sisters and oh, you know her, blah, blah, blah. 
So they, my sisters, you guys are, they're both sociopaths and they sleep around with probably like 90% of the population of Omaha, of the men in Omaha. So they probably had sex with them. You know what I mean? Cause they're whores, they're, they're sluts. So they just go around and, and they fuck everyone just to try to get them to do something for them, to manipulate them, to get something from them. And we know that men will uh, do pretty much not everything, anything for sex, but like they can get them to do a whole lot just by sleeping with them. You know what I mean? Versus someone like myself, like I'm not just going to open my legs for anybody, you know, uh, because I, I believe in soul ties. I believe that somebody will transfer their negative energy and demonic energy into you if you sleep with them. And I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to feel negative i don't want to feel awful after sleeping with somebody because they've just transferred their inner demons and toxicity into me that's why i don't do what they do but they are they're full of demons so they have no problem going and sleeping around you know their energy is toxic so why the fuck would they care about you know ruining their energy or aura it's already fucked up so they're going around like i said fucking and sucking almost everybody in this town so those people know these men they they know them you know and then they're talking to me and they see my last name or hear my last name and they're like, oh, we know your sisters, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, great, of course. <sighs> you know, because it's just, um, it's crazy. But, you know, um, another thing about Omaha is there's a higher ratio of men to women. Meaning that as far as dating here, women have the advantage because there's more men than women versus where I used to live for several years on the East Coast. It's the total opposite. There's more women than men. So dating for women and, and when I dated out there really sucks ass for women because there's a lot more women than men there. So men kind of have more of their choice, their pick. So the dating scene favors men on the east coast whereas like out here in the midwest the west women kind of have the upper hand it, it dating the dating scene favors women more so women have you know more like options they can be more choosy here but on the east coast it's very cutthroat for women to date and it was an awful experience um you know for me to date there because you know it's like it, it, the ratio, the race, the gender ratio you know but here it's a lot easier because like I said there's a lot more men so um, but it's just, it's crazy. But, um, like I said, you know, you're with the people I've ran into so far, you know, here in my hometown, it's been, you know, just one hater after the other. And it's like, they will constantly stalk and lurk you. Like they've been lurking me and just for Intel, just to gather information to use against me um to try and sabotage me what i got going on to try and drag me and hurt me drag me into their love affairs um their drama um and try and bring me down and hurt me but it's not gonna fucking work it's not gonna fucking work because when i cut somebody off from my life i am fucking serious i am literally done for life i am not going to backtrack i'm not going to unblock them and you know uh, try and uh, work things out. That's not who I am. I don't forgive people anymore. I don't backtrack. Um, I'm a fucking savage. That's right. I am a motherfucking savage. Okay. When it comes to dealing with anyone, narcissist or not, if you cross the line with me, I am going to cut you off and I'm going to be done with you for life. This isn't no, oh yeah, you know, we can reconcile after like a year, you know, maybe you'll unblock me then. No, no, motherfucker. I'm not, I'm not hitting that button ever, bitch. I'll be fucking like 85 years old and, you know, got gray hair and probably still, you know, getting facelifts and shit. What, what can I say? Like, no, I'm just kidding. But no, I, I probably will actually like <laughs> rolling up in uh, South Beach in the nightclubs with my mojito at like 80 years old. But you know what I mean? I, I'm going to be that old. And, um, still, I'm not gonna hit that fucking unblock button, bitch. I'm not. Like, you can go fuck yourself. You know, I'm never ever gonna do it. And I don't care if I come across as a cold-hearted ice, ice, ice queen bitch to these men. I really don't give a fuck. Because they never once considered my feelings when they, you know, try to bamboozle and sugar shank me and come into my life. And, you know, like I said, um, finesse me or, or, uh you know, try and play me or pit me against some other woman, you think that they, for one second, ever considered how I felt? No. 
So, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, they are so used to getting their way. And somewhere like my hometown, like Omaha, where people can be very overly nice and overly forgiving and they can be pushovers here and let people walk all over them when they should not. They need to grow some balls in this town and be able to put people in their motherfucking place. Like people on the, in New York and other places know how to do right away. People here need to get better at that shit and stop letting people disrespect them. Because I feel like here people just allow too much bullshit. So, um, you know, like I said, um, yeah. These, these haters in my hometown, they fucking hate my ass. They hate my ass. Well, they wouldn't be haters if they didn't. But um, they're especially big mad that someone like me, you know, I, I've got a mouth. I, I've got a big mouth and I'm never, ever going to shut up. I'm never going to stop talking. Um, I'm never going to stop voicing my opinion. I'm never going to stop standing up for myself. I'm never going to stop respecting myself. And these motherfuckers are big mad about it. They cannot get me to lose my respect for myself. They cannot get me to budge on my boundaries. They cannot get me to break. And they are fucking pissed off about that. You know, your hometown haters are pissed off that they weren't able to break you, pretty much. And when they see you coming back around and you're thriving and you're doing extremely well for yourself... Uh, they are going to try to fuck that shit up and bring you down again. Like they did, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Well, bitch, it's not 10, 15 years ago. It's 10, 15 years in the future. And uh, last time I checked, I'm doing 100 million gazillion million times better than your trifling fucking ass that's, you know, caught in some dead-end fucking job with some dead-end person that you don't even want to be with. Um, and meanwhile, you're looking uh, onto my life and you're trying to spy and lurk and stalk and you don't even like me and I don't even like you, but you're still lurking and, and stalking. And, you know, it's just, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, what what do you, what do you really, look? you know, what do you want? But what they want is to get a reaction out of you. What they want is to, you know, get information on you to try to pull some other stunt at some point down the future to try and fuck with you, to try and come back and, you know, lie to you again. Um, try and uh, play games with you again. And, and you know, you have to, to keep all of them blocked. And I know, you know, your your hometown haters really want you dead. And I need to be careful here because, like I said, I am now a big fish in a small-ass motherfucking pond. Uh, because, let's face it, most of Omaha, and I can't necessarily dog out where I'm from because I do have some, you know, connection to where I, I grew up, where I'm from. I have some pride in it, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I can't I can't just completely dog this town out. But the reality is a lot of people here are not that ambitious or motivated. A lot of them have not completed an education. A lot of them um, are working like dead end, you know, uh, low paying jobs um, or just have, you know, no professional work. They're not professionals. In other words, they don't have professional backgrounds, professional uh, careers. Um, a lot of them, you know, they have a lot of fucking baggage romantically and sexually. They have. Uh, a lot of a string of fucking baby mamas, baby fathers trying to get out of paying child support. They got multiple babies from multiple people. They got multiple divorces behind them. Um, they got multiple, multiple baggage. Okay. Um, they, you know, uh, like I said, they got nothing going for them. And that is why, like, you know, you've heard a lot of people, they go back to their hometowns, they get shot and killed. Okay, and I'm not saying I think something like that would happen to me, but what I'm saying is someone like myself who's ris risen above all the BS and, you know, done amazing things for my life despite being at odds with everything. Y'all, I had everything working against me and you know my story if you go back in my older videos, you know what I, what the hell and the abuse that I endured since I was born, basically, the abandonment um, the neglect, uh, the trauma, um, you know, from, and being betrayed by basically everyone in my family, never being loved, um, 
you know, being abused since I was born and still rising above all of it, still leveling up, still, you know, uh, doing amazing things for myself, uh, still, you know, caring about my appearance and caring about my life and, and the quality of my life and, you know, um, doing what I love, like, uh, that's incredible. Like most people, they give up, like, you know, my sisters did, like they go out, they hoe around and they manipulate other people and abuse them into, you know, doing things for them or, you know, and they just fuck their lives up. They fuck others' lives up as well. And I haven't done any of that. I keep to myself. I stay in my own motherfucking lane and I focus only on myself, my success, my ambitions, my dreams, my goals. And I, I have no drama. I keep other people the fuck out of my life. I don't let them in on my life, what I'm doing, what my plans are, what my goals are. I don't let them in on my finances. I don't let them in on, you know, nothing. I don't, I don't give them access, you know? Even if I was married to that person, which I probably won't ever want to get married. But like, I'm just saying, I still wouldn't give them 100% access to all that shit. You know what I mean? So... I'm doing things the smart way. And there's a lot of dumb ass women in this town. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of dumb, naive women who let the men here walk all over them. And when the guys here see there's, a, there's women that really will not allow any of that fuck shit, will not allow them to walk all over them, that's when they have a problem. That's when they're taken aback and like, whoa, wow, I've been able to disrespect so many women in my family and in this town growing up, and you're gonna all of a sudden have a backbone and tell me I can't do this anymore? Like, you know, and you're serious about it? Like, uh, they, they can't handle that shit. You know what I mean? They cannot handle that for me. They can't handle it. And they want, they hate my ass for it, and they want to bring me the fuck down. They want to harass me. They want to, you know, just bring me down. They, they don't want to see this. They don't want to see someone who's happy, self-respecting, and uh, doesn't need or want them. You know what I mean? They don't want to see that. Um, they don't want to see someone who is serious about removing them the fuck from their life and just moving on and forgetting about them. That's the worst thing for a narcissist is just being forgotten about being made irrelevant like they really are insignificant you know they don't matter and they just it's like they they feel like they just have to matter you know uh, i'm just drinking some coffee here i know it's late but i'm drinking coffee anyway you know and i know that they they want me dead a lot of people from my hometown they want me dead they they stalk they lurk but they're not going to say nothing. They're not going to say nothing. They're not going to comment. They're not going to like any of my stuff. They're not going to comment. No. These bitches. These dumb, narcissistic, motherfucking bitches. And the men too. Bitches. Cunts. Frauds. They're watching my shit too. And they're not going to like nothing. They're not going to comment. No. They're just going to silently lurk. They're going to silently lurk. Like the cowards they are. The pussy ass, motherfucking, sociopath cowards they are. They are going to stalk and lurk and study. You can study me all day, bitch. Study me. Study me. Because they want to be me. Okay? Your hometown haters, they want to be you. That's why they stalk and lurk and study you. And secret, they act like they're your haters because they don't like anything. They don't comment on any of your shit. But they're still watching. They're still studying you. So they secretly are your biggest fans. And really actually like you. But they'll never admit to you. They will never ever admit to you. That deep down they actually do like you. And that's what they had to convince me in school was that they didn't like me, that there was something wrong with me, that I was flawed, that um, I would never do better for myself, that I was just some, you know, goth person that just how, was going to go nowhere. And I was unattractive because, you know, I had black lipstick and, and some piercings and, you know, no man would ever want me well. Tables have turned, haven't they? That I've gotten older and those are phases we go through in high school. Um, not everybody goes through that particular phase, but uh, a lot of people go through the rebellious phase. 
and then they grow out of it and then they you know level up and move on and but these people man these people in your hometown they will never ever level up they won't because not everybody but the vast majority of people in at least in my hometown they like i said they are not ambitious they are not a lot of them are not they are not and i think part of the pro the reason why the honest truth why is because this is a very conservative place uh people have a lot of backwards thinking backwards ideas about family values and all this bs aka let's do stupid shit like get married and have babies young instead of working on our careers first and solidifying ourselves financially uh let's just go and buy a house together and have a bunch of babies and a white picket fence all the bullshit nebraska dream when y'all could be you know hustling and grinding building your career uh building your stacking your money you know getting to the bag and instead you're just gonna worry about you know some fucking mediocre relationship where you probably won't even want to stay together after a few years you know what i mean like they focus too much on all the wrong shit here the wrong things and then they wonder why they're so fucking miserable See, this is what I liked about the East Coast is a lot of people are a lot more driven and ambitious because they're forced to be. Because there's a lot more people on the East Coast, therefore there's a lot more competition. You know, in cities like that, like in New York City where I lived, and there's like what? How many millions of people? Um, I think like 16 million people in New York City. 16 million motherfucking people. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of competition. When you are forced to be around that many people every day, you are forced. You are forced to become successful. You are forced to be ambitious. You are forced to earn a lot of money. You are forced to go after money and your career. Whereas here, you're not forced to do that. You're just, you know, told to just be comfortable, to settle down, and to do exactly what your boring ass you know, family did of the last two or three generations. And it's sad, but a lot of people fall into that trap here and they wonder why, again, they're so fucking miserable. So, um, and that's another reason they hate my ass being back here is because I have broken out of this shitty culture of, oh, uh, you know, let's just, let's just follow what everyone else wants and Let's just do what everyone else is doing and just follow the crowd. And um, instead of worrying about ourselves and our own finances and our own futures, let's worry about what everyone else wants and what everyone else thinks. And then we're fucking miserable. You know, and it's sad. It's sad, you know, because I, I, I feel like the women in my hometown in Omaha, they could have so much better self-esteem if they would just put these motherfucking men in this town in their place. If they would just grow some fucking balls and stand up for themselves to these men. If they would just, grow, you know, grow some self-esteem, some self-respect and stand up to them. They allow them to get away with too much fuck shit here. They really do. And I'm sorry, but it's true. A lot of them need to grow a motherfucking backbone and be more like a fucking New Yorker or a Miami girl and put these motherfucking men in their place. I'm sorry. You know, they're, they're going out with these, these you know, these broke-ass, dusty-ass men. They're going out with these, you know, uh, players that they knew from, like, high school. They're going out with these, these people that just have nothing to bring to the table, these narcissists. And they're wondering why they keep getting fucked over in the same scenario every time, you know? Like I said, these women in my hometown, they need to grow a pair. And they need to start being a woman and not a little girl. I'm sorry. There's so many immature-ass women in this town. And they wonder why they keep getting ran over by these men. You know, and, and bamboozled every time. And I see it. I see it exactly for what it is now. And that's why, again, they hate my ass and they can't stand that someone like me, 
who's basically, I consider myself a New Yorker, a East Coast girl, like someone like me, they can't pull any of that BS on. They can't. None of it works. None of it. It just slides right off my motherfucking back. They can't stand me. Can't stand it. They can't stand that I'm not, that I'm not nice. They can't stand that I don't give a fuck about how they feel. Because they're used to women here putting their feelings ahead of their own feelings. They're used to women here caring more about men's feelings than their own motherfucking feelings. And isn't that sad? Isn't that fucking sad? That's sad. That's really sad. Man, I I, I really feel like I want to be like some spokesperson for... Like, the women of Omaha just start some separate, like, convention here and teach them how to, how to basically date, how to deal with men, how to, I don't know, but I, I really feel like I need to start something here because it's just not the way to go about it. It's not healthy, um, like I said, and, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's really bad, but. Um, yeah, so many women who have gotten used and played here because unfortunately, like I said, with the conservative culture here, you know, people are told not to voice how they really feel. People are told to care more about, like I said, what other people feel and think above themselves, above what they feel and think. Um, and people here are not, like I said, they're not taught to be assertive and stand up for themselves just because you ask me how are you to my face and you seem like you care even though you deep down don't give a fuck about me doesn't mean you're a better person than me doesn't mean you're a nicer person than me and doesn't mean you respect me okay the people here don't know the difference between being nice and being a good person they think if you're nice and if you say how are you how are you to everyone you see in the streets that somehow you're a good person no no, you're not a good person. You're <laughs> what makes a good person is their actions, how they act behind closed doors. Not what comes out of their mouth, not what they say. That's all bullshit, okay? It's all BS. That's all surface level, you know, like superficial shit. That's superficial, okay? You know, the whole the whole fake and nice, uh, oh yeah, yeah, how are you? Blah blah when when it's too much pressure. It's too much pressure. Just, you know, you can say hi, hi, you know, and that's it. Like, I don't know. I I just, there's things I disagree with, like I said, with here with the culture. And it's just too backwards. And a lot of ways, the thinking is so backwards, like I said. And that's why people get stuck in these dead-end relationships because that they don't even want to be in. Part of it is the culture here. The messages that are forced on us in school. Oh, you you have to be, um, you should, you know, find someone. You should, you know, get married and blah, blah, blah. You should have kids. Like, no, why? Why, bitch? Why do you want me to fuck up my life just because you fucked up your life? You know what I mean? And like I said, that's why a lot of these bitches and the, these men in, in my hometown, they can't stand my ass. They can't stand me at all. You know, because I have standards, like I said, and I refuse to, to date below my standards to, to, you know, I refuse. I fucking refuse. And another thing here is the fact that it's a conservative town. They really don't take too kindly to feminism. They don't take too kindly to women who, like myself, you know, like I said, are independent, self-sufficient. They don't rely on men or 